So here in front of me, I have a variety of the basic encaustic materials that you need to get started in painting. So first and foremost, you need something to paint on. And with encaustic, because the wax isn't flexible when it cools, you need to have a rigid surface. So the surface has to be stiff. You can't use um, like floppy canvas, even stretched canvas, because as the humidity changes and as the canvas sort of uh, is flexible, the wax could crack and then your painting would be ruined. So take it from somebody who's made that mistake. Uh, you really want to have a surface like a panel. This is a, just like a masonite panel that's been attached, um, glued onto a frame. I've made my own lots of times, really pretty simple, but you just want something that's solid. And then we'll talk about how to prep the surface in order to get it ready for your painting. But this has already been gessoed. So the surface has been prepared using encaustic gesso, which is basically like normal acrylic gesso. It's acrylic and marble dust, but it is a little bit more porous. So it has less acrylic and more um, powder substance, more of the calcium carbonate. That way the uh, encaustic can actually absorb into the surface better. And this is important because the wax, you don't want the wax to chip off, right? You don't want the surface to just flake off. You want it to really get absorbed into the, into the surface of whatever you're painting on. So the encaustic gesso is specially made and formulated for using on uh, panels for encaustic painting. Uh, you could make your own if you had gesso, like in big tubs, you could just add some more calcium carbonate and that would kind of make it simulate the encaustic gesso. Um, you could paint directly onto a wood surface. You would just need more initial layers because they will soak in um, quite a lot. So the next thing that we need that is vital to um, the encaustic once you've prepped your surface is the actual medium itself. And that is uh, made using beeswax and Damar resin. And we'll talk about all about how to make that yourself or you can purchase it certainly from uh, places like RNF or Encausticos. Um, you can get those supplies online usually or places like Dick Blick. Um, but essentially it's just a, a mixture of Damar resin, which is a hard, um, type of sap and that's been melted into the beeswax. And there's more beeswax than resin, and we'll get to that uh, ratio, but that enables the, um, the Damar resin enables the beeswax to melt at a higher temperature, and it also helps harden it so it's not so soft and gives it its sort of smooth, shiny texture when you're done. So it's an important step uh, if you just wanted to use beeswax, the surface wouldn't be the same um, and you might run into problems, but nevertheless, we'll talk about that. And so your medium is something that's essential, whether you're going to be just coating a photograph with encaustic medium or whether you're actually going to be adding pigment to your um, medium and coloring it in for different colors. Uh, it's important to start with the basic binder of encaustic paint, which is the medium. Uh, we have different ways to do that. You can buy these sticks or cakes. The pigment is already in the medium, so it's easy to just melt it um, into a pan or onto a hot plate. And you can add medium if you wanted to make it more transparent. But color is... Key if you wanted to do a painting with color. 
Uh, you can also use oil paint, and we'll talk more about the compatible materials with encaustic, but oil paint is one of the materials that is compatible, and you can actually add that to the medium uh, to create color. Uh, but having some sort of um, paint or coloring um, medium is a good idea for your painting. Um, next, we need to have something that we're going to heat it on because the encaustic melts and then cools. So it will warm up to about 200 degrees. If it goes higher than that, then you could risk burning it, and that's not good. So it's important to have a thermometer if you have something like a pancake griddle, um, get a surface thermometer so that you know exactly what the surface is. You can get a meat thermometer and actually stick it in to the paint, the pigment when it's um, warm. Obviously I can touch this because it's cooled <laughs> and it's sitting on my surface, um, nice and cool. So it will harden when it's cool, which is what you want it to do on your surface. But in order to actually paint with it, you need to warm it up. And so a pancake griddle like this one is a really good option. You can also use an anodized aluminum uh, hot plate that you put something like a burner underneath like this electric burner is a good all-around kind of uh, heat source and um, for mixing up large batches of or melting large batches of encaustic medium the clear because I use that a lot for coating and we'll use that more than the pigmented uh, paint I use either a large pot that I can melt on a heat up on a hot plate or I use a crock pot and you can find crock pots, you can buy them new or you can find them from like Goodwill and they're pretty readily available. And that's nice because you can set them for, you know, how high you want to go up, they'll melt the uh, medium and then uh, keep it all kind of contained. And I like that for the, the clear medium because I usually mix up large batches of that. And then the last thing you really need is something to apply the paint to the panel. And in that case, I use brushes. And the brushes that you want it to use are natural, not synthetic, because synthetic brushes like nylon or polyester will actually melt or burn on the hot plate. So because we're putting the brush on the hot plate and it's 200 degrees, you don't want the bristles um, to scorch. So these hockey brushes, which are natural fibers, are really good for that. Um, they're made out of wood, so they can get coated in wax. It's not gonna be a problem. And they also come in a wide variety of sizes. So you can get a really wide one for putting on your encaustic medium, the clear medium. You can get smaller versions for doing smaller bits of paint. Um, you can even get really, really tiny brushes. Um, but brushes are a really good idea. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, but with encaustic, because it's you're getting it warm and then it's cooling, it's not like you could just clean your brush that easily. There are ways, and I'll show you how to do that. But if I use a color a lot, like for instance, this sort of greenish color that I use, a lot. Uh, I'll just leave, I'll dedicate one brush to a color and I'll just leave that as my green brush or my clear, a medium brush. And whenever I want to use that color, I'll just reach for that brush, heat it up, even heat it up in the pan with the paint, and then it just rewarms and it'll go from hard to soft. And you'll be able to brush it onto your uh, panel. So again, we'll talk about how to take care of your brushes and clean them and all that good stuff. Um, but these Hake brushes, H-A-K-E, Hake brushes, uh, are a really good option for your encaustic painting. So the last thing that you're gonna need, I know I said that before. Um, so one other thing that you will need for your encaustic painting is a torch. And there are different types of torches you can use this propane torch, which I really like. Um, it will let you change the heat temperature, either really full blast or really soft. That way you can fuse the colors, you can move the color on the surface, 
what it does is the, the heat will localize on the painting and you'll be able to reheat, remelt the wax in a um, more directed way. And that way, when you put on the color, you can blend it in, you can fuse it to the layer beneath. And that's really good, like I said, because you don't want the color to just flake off. We want to bind the colors together. We want to bind the layers of wax. We're going to add a lot of layers. So even if you're adding just a little bit or you want to fuse really lightly, having a torch to fuse is going to be essential to a caustic painting. Um, you don't have to use the propane. You can use butane if you wanted, um, like a, it's, it's less um, easy to manipulate the heat with a butane torch, but some people really like it. Um, you can also use a heat gun, which doesn't have a flame. It's just electric and you can get some that will dial in the temperature and also the airflow. The heat guns I found are good for more like spot and smaller areas because they'll take a little bit longer to heat up an area. But we'll talk about uh, our, tor our friend the torch here and I'm sure you will really come to love it as you explore your encaustic